time. Specialty coffee. This is all about today, right? But what is specialty coffee? We're focusing more on numbers, grading, and overloading people with information about processing instead of focusing on the true essence of specialty, that is setting the quality and knowledge with everyone, being inclusive, and being open. We are trying to do that somehow through customer service, but we need to think of hospitality. We need to treat people as our guests rather than as customers. Hospitality is very much part of life, just like specialty coffee should be. The difference between service and hospitality is that service is how you get a product from A to B. Hospitality is how you make a person feel. In coffee shops, we say we are as good as our last service. Today, we can improve that, creating a sense of belonging for our guests. This is for you. It's like welcoming someone that is coming to your house. If you guys come into my house, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the door and I'm going to smile. I'm going to offer to take off your coats. I will do anything to make you feel comfortable. To trigger those feelings through hospitality, we need to bring value and to create atmosphere. And this is what we are going to experience today, together, through an atmospheric and sensory experience, creating the perfect environment when tasting a cup of coffee, engaging all of your senses while you are recording information about physical, sensory, and extrinsic attributes. So let's start. And I will do a small preparation for my signature beverage by pulling out two shots from the same coffee that I'm using today across all three courses. And in the meantime, let me explain what is the value that I'm bringing for you today. During our visit to Café Cien Años in Colombia, we capped this Catura Chiroso variety, a natural wild mutation of Catura, rare to find, that really stands out both for the appearance of the elongated beans as well as its sensory traits. Colombians calling it Chiroso, using this word to describe it as wavery. And I personally chose this not so popular variety whose values absolutely needs to be shared with the world and appreciated for its unique combination of characteristics. Many believe Catura Chiroso to be the new Colombian geisha. And I personally agree so much to that as during this journey, out of all the coffees that we cupped, this was by far my favorite and most memorable one. The farmer, Johan Vergara, cultivates this coffee at an altitude of 1,800 meters above the sea level at Finca Las Flores. There is a very unique microclimate in Pitalito as weather is warm, dry, and muggy and overcast, with a minimum temperature of 15 degrees to maximum 27, leading coffee cherries to develop high levels of sugars. And now going back to my signature beverage shots for a minute, I'm using 21.5 grams in to extract, excuse me, to extract 40 grams out. And when the coffee comes out of the espresso machine, it has a temperature of 66 degrees. And I will use this Paragon Brewer to shock the coffee and immediately drop its temperature by 20 degrees in order to maintain body, but also to capture aroma characteristics. And we will come back to that later. So going back to the coffee information now, and specifically process. The coffee cherries are hand-picked, carefully selected, and placed in plastic drums for a 48 hours oxidation process. And then only the rafted cherries are going through a thermal shock at 50 degrees after bricks and pH are checked. Then these tanks are sealed for 80 hours for the anaerobic fermentation process to take place while adding a yeast of Saccharomyces at 35 degrees. This specific fermentation technique in combination with high concentrations of sugars develops on coffee specific lactones and esters responsible for the sweet and creamy mouthfeel, but also the fruity and floral flavor notes. The coffee was roasted 12 days ago using a Stronghold S7 Pro. It's an electric roaster that applies convection with radiation heat using a halogen lamp that truly reveals interesting cup characteristics, increasing sweetness and mouthfeel. We roasted the coffee for nine minutes with an Actron target of 64.
And now for my espresso shots, I'm using 21.5 grams in to extract 45 grams out at 93 degrees. And please write down the cup profile. And when I serve you the cups, evaluate only the crema and wait for my instructions. So in taste balance, you will find medium acidity, high sweetness, and low bitterness. In tactile, the body is medium weight with a smooth texture and a long, juicy finish. And on flavors, you will find orange blossom, green apple, and white grapes with the delicate floral aromatics of bergamot. Please don't drink. Wait for my instructions. And evaluate only the crema. Now, please use your spoons from your right side to stir the espressos five times. And as I want you to do something new, to activate all of your senses and elevate the flavor experience, I kindly ask you to leave your notes underneath these black boxes. Please leave your notes. And then pick up the black vessel, open it, and smell the dry aroma of this Katura Tsiroso variety. Please go ahead. This will activate your olfactory senses to better perceive the flavor profile of this cup. When you're ready, close it. Put it back in case. And then lastly, while evaluating the espresso, please feel the fabric on your left side, this black one. This will highlight the silky texture and the tactile experience of this coffee. Enjoy. Judges, if you're ready now, let's move to the milk course. I will use 21.5 grams in to extract 40 grams out. A slightly different ratio to help the coffee intensity come through the milk. And then I will serve in cups of 110 ml capacity. The milk that I'm using is a lactose-free, freeze-distilled milk that I reduce it for 50, uh, by 50% in order to increase sweetness and mouthfeel. And in combination with my coffee, this will give you a flavor profile of chocolate milkshake. Toffee. And black forest. The body is creamy and thick and the aftertaste long, sweet, and silky. Judges, again, please, when I give you the cups, evaluate only the visual, wait for my instructions, and I kindly ask you to leave your notes again underneath these boxes. Ordinary trans sifting ordinary transactions to extraordinary experiences. This can be very much linked to our senses. So inspired by the sensory and cupping handbook of Specialty Coffee Association and scientific research on how senses interact with each other from a psychological and neurological perspective, I wanted to explore more on how can I drive a tasting experience by using cross-modal perception. Different senses, different shapes and colors related to the sense of sight can drive a tasting experience based on our memories. So for that reason, the cups that I'm using today are white and round with a thick rim, creating a sweet and smooth expectation before even tasting the coffee. Complex, high quality, specialty coffees. They can trigger all of our senses. Thus, it is very important to activate them all 
in order to experience flavor at the maximum. Touch is one of those senses and it can be very important on a tasting experience affecting mood and psychology. So, for that reason, I kindly ask you to go back to your boxes, grab a few of these pink sponges, hold them, please go ahead, hold them and squeeze them to your hand, playing around while evaluating the milk beverage. Their smooth, velvety feeling will help you relax, influence your perception to increase the silky texture and sweet aftertaste. Please enjoy. And now, judges, if you're ready, let's move to the signature course. We spoke about value. Now let's talk atmosphere. The surrounding environment with tasting and beverage creates an atmospheric experience, and this is where magic happens. This is exactly how I felt when I tasted this coffee on its natural environment in Colombia, where the atmospheric experience of farm and nature left no room for negative flavors in my cup. And this is my goal for today, to share my experience with you and connect you to this coffee environment. So for that reason, all of my ingredients and tasting experience are linked back to the coffee farm. My first ingredient, this, news, this infusion, 10 grams of coffee cascara mixed with 10 grams of dried coffee leaves steeped in 500 grams of water for 24 hours. Cascara will add natural sweetness to the beverage, while dried coffee leaves will balance the winey notes from cascara, and I added 25 ml. My second ingredient now is this mucilage. We took this ingredient directly from the farm. The water used to remove the mucilage during a natural fermentation of a wash process is then exposed to a gentle heat to reduce its moisture, and it has been pasteurized in the lab to become food safe. This ingredient will enhance my coffee flavor even more, but also balance the signature drink flavors. And I added another 20 ml. And my third ingredient, fermented pineapple. Similar to my coffee process, I did a lactic fermentation on fresh pineapple by adding 2% of salt for 36 hours. This ingredient will highlight even more the tropical characteristics of my coffee, but also creates complexity by bringing new flavors to the drink. And as you can see today, I'm using a coffee siphon, but in a totally different way. By adding 15 grams of ice and then blocking the air into the brewing chamber, I managed to build up pressure and create gases. These gases will mix and enhance all the ingredients together, changing their texture to slightly sparkling. Because when dry ice interacts with a liquid, it converts from solid directly to gas, in this case CO2, without first being liquefied. And now that this ingredient is ready, I will add everything to my mixing glass, along with the two double shots of espresso and then 50 grams of ice. Following that, to homogenize, but also to control the end temperature, I will then steer with a thermometer. As temperature plays an essential role on flavor perception, and I want you today to specifically taste my signature drink at 12 degrees, in order for you to get flavors of nectarine, mango, cacao nibs, and delicate florals of bergamot. The body is juicy, the texture is cooling, and the aftertaste long and refreshing. I'm using these double wall glasses in order to maintain the temperature low and consistent. And please, again, when I serve you the cups, evaluate only my signature drink only after I call my time. And now, as promised, I want you to get connected to the atmospheric experience of the coffee farm in order to fully enjoy and appreciate this great coffee on its natural environment. Because judges, what's in the cup matters, what's around the cup matters, what we care for matters, even your cup matters. And this, this is specialty coffee. Time. And time, thank you very much, Chris from Switzerland.
We have some messages from our sponsors and we will be back in a couple of seconds.